you want to figure out the hell you're made of, launch a business. Start becoming your own oh. business. I don't know any other tool in the world that'll make you grow up, level up, figure yourself out faster than launching your own business. Welcome to the Pivotal Leader Podcast with Gina Tremarco, featuring lively interviews with CEOs, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who share their stories and best practices for shifting business from problems to profits. Sit back and get ready to pivot. Hey everyone, this is Gina Tremarco, Chief Results Officer of Pivot 10 Results, a strategy and training company that helps businesses shift from people problems to performance results. Each week on The Pivotal Leader, I feature inspirational leaders who know how to positively impact their customers, employees, and brands through culture building. On this episode of The Pivotal Leader, I interviewed, or should I say, chatted with, or uh, joked around with, I don't know, it was a big conversation with Donnie Bovine. What's crazy is we recorded this episode while I was on a trip in Dallas and he lives in Fort Worth, seemingly close to each other, but not. Neither one of us, I think, wanted to drive in traffic. It'll make more sense when you listen to it when we talk about being on the other side of the megaplex. One thing's for sure, we hit it off immediately. He's like the male version of me, which is kind of scary and kind of exciting all at the same time. So stay tuned and strap in for a fun ride um, with this episode. But before we get started, a little more about Johnny. He's a success coach, podcast coach, content developer, international speaker, and host of the Success Champions podcast, which you will be able to hear me on soon as a guest of his. He's an expert sales professional and top 200 iTunes podcaster. At the age of 40, he discovered he had been living other people's dreams and not chasing his own. Taking the biggest risk in his life, he jumped out and started a business. Although he had great success at the start, he quickly understood he knew nothing about being a business owner. Through learning from his mistakes and being at the brink of failure, he gained the experience, perseverance, and attitude required to succeed. He's a pretty smart dude doing some brilliant stuff in sales and content marketing, and now we're besties. Um, Not sure he knows that yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he knows that yet. Really cool, inspiring guy. I think you're going to really enjoy this episode. Episode. So just buckle up and here we go. Our listeners need to learn more about you. So maybe you can share some of your amazingness with yeah. me and our listeners of who is Donnie and how do you say your last name? So the last name is pronounced Bovine. What I am, who I am, I'm just a good looking dude with baby blue eyes. <laughs> you, are, you, are, <laughs> you are a good looking dude. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So the quick, short, down and dirty, former United States Marine, uh, reformed sales guy, spent the last seven years of my career before I launched my own company as a national award winning, got to throw that title in there, uh, sales trainer. <laughs> you need like applause music in the background. Uh, <laughs> uh, then in uh, 2017, jumped out of my own, started my own business, thought I was just going to be Billy Badass, set the world on fire, failed flipping miserably because, well, you spend 20 years as an employee, you try and start a business. Um, Amen, brother. <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize that I was, you know, Mr. Employee Mindset. Um, I, and I, I didn't realize how many of those skills would not transition over to business ownership. Um, so I, instead of trying to create a business, I seriously made a job for myself and, and ran it straight into the ground. Um, uh, I say in the ground. It didn't completely fall apart, but that's only because I threw a Hail Mary pass and somebody happened to catch it. Um, but I was on the brink of completely shutting it down. Um, when I found pad podcasting and, you know, three months into podcasting, I hit top 200 on iTunes in the business category, five months in, I hit top 200 overall. And now I bounce in and out of there all the time. Highest I've been is 59, but, um, and it taught me processes, procedures. It taught me, you know, how to properly have my business development side going, my operational side going, and the fucking accounting side going. Um, and to get everything rolling forward, and it forced me to become a business owner. And thank God it did, because that's the only reason I'm still in business. That is really interesting. So the process of podcasting is what got you into a better process. Yeah. So, cause like on my show, 
I do interviews, right? Just like this. Um, and, and I launched the show for two reasons. One, I picked up business by being a guest on the show, which was really cool. Um, and, and two, I knew growing up, I heard inspirational stories of what other people went through. So I figured if I could get the right people that I wanted to hear the right stories, other people would be interested in those stories as well. And they were. So, but in doing that, I launched a daily show. And for 191 episodes, I launched a new show every day. Oh my God. Hour long show. Every oh my. Day that I do. Did you produce them or did someone else produce them? I produced like the first five or 10. And then I was like, Fuck. cause it's a lot of work. It is. It is. It really is. Um, and, and, uh, Joe Phelan has been with me the entire ride as my editor. Dude's amazing. Former army guy, um, raises snakes, which I always bust his chops around. Yeah. I don't know how you, you become a, a snake breeder slash podcast editor. And he's got a famous YouTube channel as well. So what's his YouTube channel? Uh, I think it's called port city pythons. Okay. But it's a very, I mean, there's probably like 5,000 subscribers, but they're like super niche, you know, to the reptile snake breeding world, something, you know, um, you know, I, I don't understand. I don't, I have a farm. If there's a snake, the snake is eliminated. I mean, <laughs> you know. um, but uh, uh, by getting all these guests and, you know, I was interviewing people across the world. You know, I was, when I first launched, I was doing nine interviews every Friday and then that was stupid. So I cut it back to six um, back to back yeah. interviews. Wow. And it's still, that was over the top. Um, but in coordinating all those, I had to learn to get an audio scheduler. I had to learn to do all the reach outs. I had to learn to do all the conversations and finding guests for me was never a problem. I always laugh when people say they struggle at finding guests. Mm -hmm. Either your show sucks, um, or you're scared of your own shadow because just go ask people. People want to tell their stories. Go ask. Um, you know, so much so I've actually had to write a book on, you know, how to get guests on your podcast and how to get book on other podcasts. It's crazy to me. But, um, uh, it taught me, you know, I had to get all the, the schedules together. I had to get all the processes together. I had to get all the distribution together, the show notes, grabbing all the stuff. But in doing all that, I kept learning processes and going back to I learned procedures to keep everything moving forward. Then, oh, shit, somewhere along the way, I've got to monetize this thing. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I can't just do it. So then I had to figure out all the monetizations. And that's when we built their, our content development company. Um, we launched a couple of micro eBooks and, you know, then really went after the speaking and coaching world. Um, but it all came to my goal has always been to begin on the big stages and that's what I've been doing. And it all once again came from the podcast. Wow. So the exposure of the podcast, would, would you say that's what's helped you? Get yeah, the social the proof. Thing? Yeah, the social yeah. proof. Um, it, it's, it's funny. When I was a sales trainer, you know, I'd walk into a room and people, you know, get that, that, that horrible networking business question you always get, you know, hey, what do you do? <sighs> right? <laughs> And come up with a better question, but anyway, go on, <laughs> you know, but when somebody had asked me, you know, I hated 30 second commercials. I think they're the stupidest fucking thing on the face. Yeah, I agree. It's like, roll the table. Well, let me tell you back in 1963, blah, blah, blah. Shut the hell up. Here's how I help people. <laughs> right, right. Which is the bottom line of, I don't know how to sell. So let me try and spin some bullshit. So you'll buy whatever I have in front of me right now. Um, but, uh, the, crux of it all is when people would ask me and I'd say I was a sales trainer. Do you think they wanted to run up and hug me at that point? Well, no. you are, you are good looking. <laughs> True. Outside of that. I, mean, I would have hugged you, but anyway, right. right. I'm, I'm not getting a lot of dudes hugging on me. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Good or, point. Uh, or in this world, uh, I'm not getting a lot of they's hugging on me. I've, I've been told that I've got to watch my, my, uh, I don't even know how you say it. You can't call them guy or girl. You got to call them they. I, I don't. Right, know. right. I don't. It's know. a it's a messed up pronoun situation. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't understand my pronouns. But um, uh, when I started doing podcasting, and I walked into rooms and people were like, "What do you do?" and I'm like, "Oh, I'm a podcaster." Boom! Instant conversation. People were like, "Oh, tell me more. What's it about? Where's your show? How do I listen to it? What's a podcast?" And I still get that nowadays, which cracks me up. Is what's a podcast? <laughs> I'm like, they've only been around since the Stone Age, but hey, 
you know, um, but there are a lot of people that don't listen to podcasts and don't understand how they work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Um, but it started really changing the dynamics and I was being invited into rooms to surprisingly to speak on podcasting which was interesting to me. Even before my show really took off, people were asking me to come in and speak on podcasting, which, you know, I'd always spoke on stages about sales and business development, but speak on podcasting was a new thing. So that got to be fun and, you know, so much fun that it took me to Ireland last year. I just came back from Tampa to speaking in a big conference there on podcasting. And, you know, uh, uh, it changed the dynamic of conversations from one, um, I learned quickly that your guests don't matter. Um, your guest fans already know everything about you, right? Or about your guest. Right, right. They're not coming to your show to listen to my story again. Right. Right. You know, um, so I had to learn on from that, you know, from the business side of things, how to really turn my company into a marketing machine to grow this flipping podcast. And so that's what I was speaking on a lot. I was teaching people how to really scale up their podcast and grow them. And, you know, in the flip side of all that, because my Friday shows, I went solo and I would just rant as everybody kept talking it. So we love it when you just rant on your Friday shows um, for 35 minutes to an hour. And it's those Friday shows that people were listening to and bringing me in to speak and all different. I spoke in a prison <laughs> You know, uh, an all woman's prison too, which was interesting. What's funny about that is they put my picture in the flyer. Oh my God. And a lot of the flyers came up missing before I left. <laughs> so uh, I wonder what you're doing with them. <laughs> so uh, I'm now um, wallpaper in a prison somewhere, I'm sure. Or under someone's mattress. Um, quite possibly. My wife really enjoys it when I tell that story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, 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 it's been quite a cool, fun ride. And it's amazing that just something as simple as podcasting opened up so many cool doors for me to, to figure out how to level up me and my business. Because mm. I tell everybody, man, you want to figure out the hell you're made of? Launch a business. Start becoming your own oh, business owner. Yeah, yeah. I don't know any other tool in the world that'll make you grow up, level up, figure yourself out faster than launching your own business. And launching a podcast is very much like launching a business. Mm -hmm. Very much so. I mean, I'm, we're launching the second one and I'm doing everything. Um, and the second one's got a great title. You ready? I'm, I'm ready. It's Donnie Talks. Boom. Drop the mic. <laughs> right. So, um, but in the launching of the second one, where we've put a, a entire team together this time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, we're doing all this pre-launch stuff. Yep. And, um, it's insane. You know, because competition's gotten really steep, you know, in there. But you know, if you don't do a it's big something explosion. crazy, it's like there's six hundred and fifty thousand podcasts. Depending on which study you read, yeah. So it's somewhere between yeah. 600 and 650, yeah. Um, right now they're saying 600 shows are launching a day. You know, that's, that's, a, that's crazy. Well, but to put this in a comparison, this is what I love when I'm on stage telling people is, well, I'll ask you, how many books were written last year? Any idea? No, I have no idea. Four million books. So just in comparison, what I tell everybody is look at all the libraries, the Amazons, the bookstores in the world. How many books are in the marketplace? Now flip that. There's only 650,000 podcasts. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we're still in the beginning stages of this. Now we are hitting, I think, the adolescent years, at least if not getting close to the teenage years in podcasting. Yeah. Um, but I read a funny stat the other day that it just makes me giggle that uh, they say that uh, soon will be gone the days of free podcasting because everybody's trying to be the new Netflix of podcasting. And I just laugh. I'm like, dude, it started off as free. You're not going to charge people. You can't change it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too far in the game. And Remember when they said, um, face, I, I don't know if it was a rumor that maybe it was going to cost him to have Facebook. Yeah, no. Yeah, I meant, no, no. Um, consumers, consumers always control the marketplace as long as 
you play by the right rules, right? You can make a lot of money off the consumers. You just got to play by the right rules. Right, right. And the rules they actually, the consumer actually makes, you just got to get creative on the profit side of things, you know, and, and, you know, something will eventually come along and beat out podcasts, but I think we're on for a pretty good ride for now. Well, there's, there's so many things I want to ask you. And there's so many, I think <laughs> that's what I was like excited about talking to you because you and I, I think have similar energies and can go into all kinds of different tangents for this, for the sake of the pivotal leader. There's so much I want to ask you. So I'm first, I'm curious, your business almost failed. Yep. And you had a Hail Mary. What was, what was, was the podcast, the Hail Mary? No, actually it was a speaking engagement. Um, okay. I, uh, it was April of 2018 and, um, I was, I was already looking at my wife. We were on the brink of losing the farm, our cars, you know, um, everything. And I looked at her and said, babe, I've got one last speaking engagement. I'm going out Bon Jovi style with this thing or Bruce Springsteen style. He's the one that said it Bruce Springsteen style. And I'm going to leave it all on the stage. And if nothing happens from, from this, you know, uh, speaking engagement, I'll go back and find a job because I can go sell anywhere. Right. And I, you know, and at this point you were, you were functioning in the, what you called your, you called yourself a sales trainer. Is that, no, that I, so when I launched my business, I was under a national, almost international non compete. So I couldn't do the sales thing. Okay. So I, I came out the gate as a success coach. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that's, for, bus- that's, for businesses, individuals? Uh, I, I was doing a little bit of both, primarily individuals, um, because I was so worried about fighting that non compete. Okay. Um, and so I was doing a lot of teaching people, you know, how to do business development for their company. Cause in this day and age, there's not just sales, it's full on business development, right? So if you're a salesperson, not in the social game, you're screwing shit up. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so, so you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to leave everything on stage and I sent you down a, a different team. No, no, you're good. You're good. Good. So, um, I went up there and I, and I remember there was a, a acapella singing show on TV and I forget the name of the damn thing, but one of the boys to men guys. Was oh, like, Glee. Was it Glee? No, nah, no, nah, not nah, Glee. This, this was a, like a reality TV kind oh, of, like, okay. um, but it was all acapella and, um, I, the, the last season the show aired, um, there was a college group there, all guys, you know, singing choir, and these dudes could freaking wail. Well, they made it to the championships, and the littlest dude on their team, um, little guy, was four foot something, and they made him sing the solo, and they were doing the song Take Me to Church, which is just a brilliant, oh, I love song, that. Power, powerful freaking song. Yeah. Well, when this dude breaks out the solo, little guy breaks out the solo, man. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Did he just, I mean, he left it all there. I mean, when it was so awesome that he literally hit his knees out of exhaustion when he was done singing. So people wow. Go YouTube that video. And that's, that's what I felt like when I walked off that stage that day was I felt like I'd left it all there. I gave him everything that I had. And I walked off stage and a guy walked up to me afterwards amongst a bunch of people, but he came up to me and he goes, man, I love your energy. I love your vibe. Would you do me a favor? I'm like, sure. He goes, would you come be a guest on my podcast? I said, what the hell's a podcast? <laughs> and this was 20 last year, April. Is it like, that's like a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he explained what a podcast was and I kept busting his chops. I'm like, Oh, so I'm coming on to do talk radio. Um, and I went on a show and literally, um, by being interviewed on a show, we focused heavy on the sales side of things and really went down that rabbit hole. I picked up a client from one of his listeners and I went, holy shit, you can get business off of guessing on podcast. Hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> I went on 67 shows in the next 30 days. All right, I need that how to how to get on other podcasts. Document. Well, for four ninety nine, I have a book yeah. called "Get Booked on Podcasts." <laughs> yeah, and and I'm sure you can relate to this to some extent when you're producing a podcast. Like someone just asked me, "What podcast do you listen to?" I'm like, um, "Mine." I mean, I'm yeah. you're you're so busy producing your own 
that I'm like, okay, I have to focus on getting on others versus getting people onto onto mine, and that's that's the constant challenge when you're in the podcast world. Yeah, I agree. In my opinion. No, I, I told everybody before I started my show, the only show that I really listened to was Guy Raz's How I Built This. Yeah, it's a good show. Dude, yeah, it's a, and I tell everybody, I think it's just the best produced show in the marketplace. People can talk about Rogan and all his shit and whatnot. But I just love because I love that PBS style special, you know, type thing. And that's Guy just does not He's got an amazing voice, too. Um you know, I, I just love that style. So I tried to mimic somewhat of my show after his vibe and his style, and then it completely went off the rails. Now it's nothing like his show, but it started out that way. Um, I think. Well, I think from a you know, we need things that we can aspire to be, and then morph it into what is what is us. Yeah, yeah, I I completely agree with that. But you know what people don't see behind the scenes of the show, and you get a test. I mean, you record an hour. Um, if you were to, crazy enough to edit yourself, it's going to take you a couple hours to do all the editing on it. Add the music. Right. right. Uh, if you got an over the top editor, they're going to be taking out the ums, the ahs and all that crap. But, right. um, you know, so it's going to be very, very time consuming. And, and, and then the marketing of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Got- I don't know what takes longer, the actual production, which now I outsource everything, but I do do a lot of the marketing behind it. Um, I will tell you, and this is great for your listeners too, even for their sales or marketing processes, is put a system in play. I yeah. mean, if, if your marketing is not a machine, you're playing the game wrong. And yeah. you know, every day needs to be a different function inside that that you know marketing strategy, so you know what to do. You, you never be lo- need to be looking at a day going, okay, what am I? How am I going to market today? If you are, you're going to lose. <laughs> Well, I mean, case in point, anyone is starting up a business because you talked a little bit about that, that that really defines who you are when you go from employee to employer or being the person who signs the front of the check versus the back of the check. Two different different worlds. If you don't have those systems in place, uh, and that's definitely something I learned. And with the second podcast, kind of like what you're about to go through, we did we did it differently. Like there was a, there was a launch team. There was a actual business plan behind it. There's actually a legal entity to it with partners and shares. And I mean, all of it sounds crazy, but at the end of the day, when you have multiple people involved too, like now it's a real business with a, there's a whole system behind it. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to, I mean, uh, some people, I mean, I was lucky enough in the sales game, even though I taught a sales system, I was still the wing, wing it guy. You know, you, uh, you give me the freaking contact list. I'll take care of everything else from there and grow a business. And, and so that always worked for me. So when I launched my business, I tried to, to run my business the same way. I'll just figure it out on the fly. I mean, it's kind of like I threw the parachute out the door and tried to jump and catch it on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> and that was part of the reason it was failing so miserably is I was really trying to do everything I did in the job, you know, but you've got to know every day what, what is going on in that day. I mean, I, it, it's crazy the sounds for my business. I still do an old school to-do list every morning. Oh, yes. We'll sit down and do a to-do. Cause, and if I don't, I'm haywire. Because I got, you know, I've got a guy who helps me find guests on my show. Um, and I've got my book being written. I've got the podcast going. We're working on the second podcast. I manage two Facebook groups, um, email lists, speaking engagements. You know, I'm being interviewed on shows. You know, if I don't have my to-do list in front of me, um, I'm going to go off the rails and find myself, you know, a half hour working into a project going, holy shit, you should have been doing this over here. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the only thing that keeps me straight. And I think for anybody listening, whether you own a business, trying to produce a podcast, you're an employee, uh, you have to have systems in place and goals in place because you need the roadmap to get to where you're driving to. Yeah. And I'll tell anybody, um, if you hate the system, you hate the product. Cause that was me. I, if somebody came and said, Don, you've got to do this, this, this is like buck. I hated it. And it always comes down to, if you hate that system, you hate that process, you either are scared of success or hate what you do. And it's because that process is actually going to force you to fucking work. Yeah. Right. It's going to force you to do the things 
that that you were looking at going uh you know anytime you say i don't want to do that it, it comes back to you just don't want to work and that's accountability at its finest and i'll yeah I, i'm usually always very transparent i think one of my biggest weaknesses has often been fear of success where i'll put things off because i'm like that's just going to grow it into a bigger situation. So, um, and you're right. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of people struggle with that. Here's my only cure for fear of success is, and I love telling people this because it throws them for a loop. I don't believe in goal setting. I okay. think goals are a joke. Okay. Um, and here's why. I think most times when people set a goal, it's just like setting a, a New Year's resolution type thing. They already know they can't hit it, so they don't do it. Right. So, Ooh, yeah. Right. So I, and we're not even smoking. I mean, I'm no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the truth of the matter is I believe in having a vision. Like I want to be one of the biggest names in the world and some of the biggest stages in the world. That's, that's where I'm going. I'm going to be changing and impacting lives um, to a great extent. That's where I'm aiming at in life. Now, how that's all going to play out and to get there. No fucking clue. But here's what I do know. I know exactly where my revenue of my company is. I'm not trying to grow a $10 million business, right? That would be too big of a leap for my company. Mm -hmm. But I know what my next little milestone should be. I know that next little place I should get to. And see, I'm a huge fan of incremental growth. Because with incremental growth, that next level becomes my new comfort zone. So I'm into the game of let's set the next milestone. So I always go back to sales. Let's say you're a sales guy who sells $10,000 a year. Well, all of last year you sold, you know, $120,000. You don't look at me this starting off January, 2019 and go, I'm going to sell $2.9 million. It's too big of a leap. Right. But if you go back and look at it and say, okay, I did $10,000 every month last year. Cool. Let's see if we can get to $11,000. Yeah. Right. Let's do that for a couple months and then see if we get to 12. The cool thing about doing that is it allows you to step into that new comfort zone, becomes your new plateau. And once you get to that level, you know how to get back to that level if something happens. When you take those big leaps, like what happens to lottery winners and all those type of things, things just go south because, and I tell everybody, I don't ever want to win the lottery. Because I've never managed that much money yeah. to know how to earn it or how to keep yeah. it. You know. It's kind of like a training for a marathon or, or preparing for anything. You're not going to, you can't think that you can do it overnight. And I've been guilty of that, of setting goals, financial goals. And I'm like you know, doubling our revenue. And I'm like, that was stupid. Like, <laughs> but you don't really, you don't really <laughs> learn that until you fail at it. Yeah. Well, um, the probably the number one thing that I get laughed at about stage is two phrases. I'm always like, you should look at life and say, hold my beer and watch this. Um, <laughs> the, the second thing that I say is if you're not getting punched in the face by life, then you're not going for it. Um, and it's, it's the truth Dude, going for wherever you're trying to get to, you're going to get the crap beat out of you. You're going to get stomped on kicks, yeah, yeah. beat around. Right. Um, and then here comes my most quoted quote, because it's not mine. But I love this quote. It's by Rocky Balboa. You ready? Hold on. I want to brace myself. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you killed me. So here it is. Here it is. Okay. Got the anticipation going. Everybody listen. Turn up your volume. <laughs> we need like the NASCAR sound going on. <laughs> That sounded like a shot cat. I don't know what that was, but that sounded like a cat shot the ass of rocks. <laughs> I realized that as I was doing it, it was too late. I was already in it. <laughs> you were pot committed at that point. Oh, okay. Shoot, right, let's go. <laughs> so the greatest quote by Rocky Babo is, life is not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can take a hit and keep moving forward. Oh, I, I was going to say, or is it as to, uh, how hard you hit back? But I, I like yours better. Yeah, the, the, well, I'm, I'm just the reading. The one you're quoting, yeah, the one you're quoting, yeah. yeah, yeah. Say, that, say that one more time. 
uh, life's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can take a hit and okay. keep moving forward because that's it. I mean, you're going to get knocked on your ass and it's about getting back up and taking another step. Sometimes it's about taking a different step, right? You just well, described me in like 10 seconds. Like the same step over and over and getting knocked back on your ass or taking the different step? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, out, you know, getting knocked on your ass and having to get back up. Gosh, no, I'm not taking the same step. That would be stupid. Well, but that's what most people I think are doing is uh, it's like somebody comes up to me and then I want to ask you that question, but somebody comes up to me and they're like, or tells me, Donnie, I'm, I'm looking for a job. I'm like, cool. What'd you do for a career? Well, I spent 20 years in sales. And my response that I usually keep in my head, but doesn't always come out. I might look, if you've been in sales for 20 years and you're on the streets, cause you fucking suck at sales. Um, no good salesman's on the street, period. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you have is. Unless, unless you're a panhandler, because I, I have written a blog about that, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested now. <laughs> um, but, but what most people have is they don't have 20 years of experience. They have year one repeated 20 times. Oh. They've never evolved. They've never leveled up. They're still scared of the same shit they were 20 years ago. Yeah. And that's why they don't have a job because they don't, won't get out of their own damn way to go for it. Or they suck at sales or they suck yeah. at what they do. You know, and, you know, I talked to a guy the other day that's been in insurance sales for 20 years. And he's like, well, I'm on my third company. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be unemployable. I'm like, well, get out of the insurance game. He goes, but that's all I know. I'm like, well, obviously you don't know it because you suck at sales. Hello. You know, get out. Do something different. Go try something different. But it always comes back to what the real matter is. It's not that they, they, that's all they know. They just want that freedom, right? That freedom to kind of get your own schedule and your own hours, that kind of thing that comes with it. They just yeah. don't want to do the fucking work. No. I think there's two kinds of salespeople, the people who want that freedom, who really don't want to work. They just like that freedom of I can do whatever I want. And then the, the, the kind that's like they want the freedom because they want to kill it and crush it. Yes. But what you'll find with the kill it and crush it is they're usually a lone wolf. They're not mm -hmm. usually a team player. Yeah, true. And, and a lot of times they're going to be the ones launching their own company down the way. Yeah. You know, it's, it, I love for people to look at it is, you know, back in the 08, 09 downturn when everything went to hell in a handbasket. Oh, I remember. I started my business then. Yeah. Oh, that was good timing. Good timing. Well, well thought out plan. Well, uh, there's a story behind it, which we'll talk about mm. in the next, in the next portion of this uh, <laughs> marathon right. recording. Right. Well, the, the, my, Truth that I know, because uh, I was in the sales game at that point, and we went from a 14-person sales team, and I wasn't a manager, I was just one of the sales guys, um, down to like four. And what happened was, is all the people that could actually sell grew their books of businesses. You know, I, I still lost business. I lost a shit ton of business during that time, but we were still selling and growing business. Everybody else were great order takers. You know, and what most companies have is phenomenal order takers. As long as you bring them the business, bring them the leads, bring them everything, yeah. they will crush it. But the minute the economy goes to poop and they got to go out and do actual business development, it's over. Because they're scared of their own shadow to go tell somebody hi that they can't grow a business. And that's what happens to most of these companies is they get people – supposed salespeople that have large books of businesses. But when that book of business is gone, it's over. I mean, I had a guy that I trained that had over $4 million book of business. It was with one account. Oh. And I remember asking him, I said, dude, what happens when this account goes away? His response, I retire. Wow. You know, and unfortunately, that's what's handicapping most companies out there is they've got order takers versus salespeople. Well, as we as we record this, it's 2019. Um, projections for economic, there's going to be another economic kind of a little bit of a downturn by the end of 2019. I think companies listening to this need to take heed then because you're going to have to have some kind of plan in place for the next slight downturn. 
Yeah. And, and a quick thing you can do to ask your salespeople to figure out if you've got people that can actually hunt or not, up their quota. Up their quota and tell them that X amount of percentage of their sales needs to come from new business. Yeah. Right? Brand new accounts all over. And watch them squirm. You're going to get everything in the book of I'm too busy maintaining these accounts and blah, blah, blah. Make them go after new business and watch what happens. It's, it's a huge tell. And, and, and along with that, I think strong leadership is important on that because if, if those salespeople are accustomed to doing things the way they always have and, if, and you have a number of excuses like trying to maintain accounts and then the admin part of what they're doing, what are you as the sales leader doing to disrupt that a little bit and give them the tools that they need to, I mean, this is like, this is like entrepreneurship 101. You can relate to this. I'm constantly saying to myself, what am I working on that I should not be working on that I use as an excuse to get in the way? Yeah. That's a great question. Uh, actually, that's a smart, I don't think I've ever asked that, but I'm going to borrow that from now on. So how much is that coaching session you just put me through? Thanks. <laughs> I'm sure I will find something to barter with you. on. <laughs> Which is also the entrepreneur move. Right, right. I, I mean, I think that's an important piece of it is we can, we can beat up on the salesperson who has a million excuses, but what kind of leadership or management was behind getting them to a better place? Well, but you also got to know that the the leadership, you know, when's the last time they invested in their sales team? Oh, that was going to be my next. <laughs> right. Um, because, I mean, I, you got to love Richard Branson's quote, which is, you know, people always ask him, what happens if I train my people and they leave? And his response is always, what happens if you don't train them and they stay? You know, and it's that whole thought yeah. process. If you're not investing in your team, you know, I, you know your sales team, is like your offense of your company. And if not, then they're, then you're playing defense. And that's a whole nother deep bag of worms I can dive into. But, you know, they're the offense. They're the people out there shaking up and go for it. If you're not investing in those guys to get better at what they're doing, then it's on you is just as much as it is on them to take ownership of how do you take your company to the next level. Right, right. You know, um, there's a reason that the training industry is a billion-dollar industry. You know, because, you know, what got you here won't get you there and you need to find ways to level up. And, you know, the old MO, at least in a lot of your sales, is let's not get a new green guy and or gal and train them up to be an awesome salesperson. Let's go find the old codger that couldn't sell in the first place, but is sitting on a couple million dollars worth of business and just move it over to this account and sit on it and then they wonder when everything goes to hell in a handbasket that same dude can't go get another two million dollars of the business it's because he was handed it to him originally at his original company he never got it in the first place well it's taking it's taking the easy way out it's not having a long game right yeah. it's it's not about planning this is the thing that used to drive me crazy when i was back in the corporate world of you know when the panic starts that we need more revenue and then they they do the push and like get out there and get more revenue tomorrow and nobody wanted to have the foresight to put any kind of investment financially or time wise into training and doing the right things to grow the business yeah it's cuz everything gets comfy right i mean everybody gets that that point in their company where it's like everything's coming in everything's working so let's not do anything Versus doing a thing like getting rid of the bottom tier sales guy who's not producing, freeing up whatever that base is and turn that into a marketing fund to build out a lead system or a training system. They're like, oh, but I love that 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 weak link on my freaking sales chain versus just getting rid of the dead weight. And I hate to say it dead weight, but it's the truth. Well, how do you feel about, you know, especially again with this slight downturn coming up, how do you feel about bringing on more salespeople. If you want to grow your business and you want to stay ahead of the game, bringing on more salespeople and creating a little bit of a competitive environment to see who's going to make it, who's going to rise above and who, you, you know, you're going to push out. Well, I, I'm all for cleaning house before you do that um, because otherwise you're going to compound some of the crappy behaviors yeah. you already have, okay. right? So, so I'm going to look at my team and say, we will be hiring more salespeople you got to be above this bar to be stay on the team before yeah. we start bringing in other people. And what you do is you immediately start, you know, cleaning house because yeah. people will keep on the worst salesperson or, you know, in the world 
even when they don't need to. So, so you create a bar that they got to stick around um, and get them to start producing. Because look, salespeople aren't paid to do paperwork. They're not paid to do operations. They're not paid right. to do all this other ancillary stuff. They're paid to sell. So the name of the game is go freaking sell. Right. And you've got to create an environment where they can go sell. And, but then hell yeah. Um, I tell everybody that you're, especially in the larger sales teams, you, I mean, if you got 10 people on a sales team, you should have micro teams and create these micro teams that turn into competitive nature. So maybe it's, you know, three teams of three and a sales manager type thing, you know, let them get team names, let them get stacked up, let them, you know, be able to get that competitive nature going and have some fun with it. Um, because you'll bring up the weak links and, you know, you'll get the old dogs starting to teach the young ones and take some of the pressure off of you. Yeah. You said something earlier about, um, I can't remember, something that triggered me about how do we, oh, bringing in new business, something that we did recently with a client and we did this beta test that we're still running and it was a sales, it's a sales challenge contest that, our company as the outsider is actually executing because for us, we need to know what the return on investment is. You get this, right? Like when, when a potential client wants to know how you're going to impact their top line. So we created this contest for this one client where the salespeople have to, on their weekly sales report, note things that they did that were from what they learned in training with us. It's literally on their sales report. Did you do one of these three things to close the deal? And so it's top of mind for them every week. And then that goes into an online contest form that they get to enter. And we did it. In, we did a beta in like fourth quarter of 2018. And now we're doing a new one in 2019, first quarter. And what I noticed in the first one was that everything they were entering was like all existing business. <laughs> So I went back to the client and I said, all right, we need to change this because like the goal here is to bring in, right? Some new business. So we changed the component to a new business. Like everything that they enter has to be new business. So that's, ra that's wrapping up actually later this week, but it well, created interesting. a com competitive, exciting environment for them to do it. And salespeople always perform to the level that you actually manage them. So, so whatever bar you put in front of them, that's what they're going to do. So if you put a quota in front of them, or I'd rather I'd call it a gift, um, you put a gift in front of them, that's what they're going to go. Whatever they're measured on, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. So if you say that to win is, I mean, uh, early in my sales career to be a top sales guy before I knew any better, it was, you had to go get so many sales meetings a day or a, a, a week. And you get your name put at the top of this chart. I'm like, yeah. fuck, that's all I got to do? I was doubling the amount of, of <laughs> you know, the meeting. I wasn't getting right, the deals right, right, done, right? right? But I was right. getting the meetings um, just so I could be at the top of the charts. And that's when my sales manager, of course, the sales manager was a great dude. But he was also that guy caught up in, you know, he was the top sales guy that they made salesperson, which, by the way, is the stupidest thing in the world to ever take your – strongest sales asset out of the field and make them a sales manager. It's just retarded. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But he finally came to me and said, okay, dude, I get it. I screwed up. I made it to whoever can get the most meetings wins this competition. So he goes, so we're changing it to a revenue model. So, so now do the same thing. And then my numbers went through the roof, but um, it's, it all comes down to whatever you measure, that's what they're going to perform at. Yeah. So I want to, I want, before we wrap up this portion of our recording for the Pivotal Leader, I want to <laughs> go back to that moment where you put everything out there on the stage and someone put you on a podcast and then you um, got a client from that. Let's kind of fast forward us to how that changed you, transformed you, your business and, and where you are today. Yeah, no, thanks for that. Um, so um, it was around episode 50 of doing all those interviews that um, I launched or I decided I was going to launch my own podcast and that's really where it took off. Um, and, and a lot of things, you know, go back to and revolve around, around that. So one of the things that we were, you know, created 
because of the podcast is just like this. We record every episode via Zoom. And because of some things that I already done, I already had some assets in place that allowed us to launch a new company. And so now we have a content development company. And what we do is we go in and we get CEOs, business owners, marketing people, or individuals, and we'll do an hour recording session with them. Um, it's usually me. I'll come in and do the recording. Um, and then we'll take that, that recording and we'll pull me out of the mix and we'll turn it into a month's worth of social content for them. So we'll scrub it down to micro videos, blog posts, um, social graphics, and I turn that over to a team. And that was our first major revenue stream for the podcast because I was offering it to every guest that came on the show. Um, and now we've got other podcasters that have that, that, that program. So we launched an affiliate program to get other podcasters like, look, you're already interviewing people, right? You're already having these conversations. I was just going to ask if I could steal that, but you yeah, have a program. So of course I do. <laughs> I'm so like, amazing. So all you got to do is send us the content and our team will take care of it and hand it right back to you. Um, you and know. so, and then the guest, it really becomes a cost to the guest. Yeah, it's, it's all right, past. It's, con it's content for them. Yep. Freaking brilliant. Yeah. So, so, and it, you know, as a, you know, as a business owner, you get those nights where you can't sleep, you're tossing and turning, tossing and turning, and then all of a sudden light bulb moment, holy shit, that's the answer. Well, that's how yeah. I came up with this idea. And we tried it out and the first three people I talked to bought it. I'm like, oh, holy hell, this is something. <laughs> And, you know, so then we just started scaling it up. Oh, gosh. We're going to have to schedule a separate call. Maybe. <laughs> remember that Remember that great coaching I gave you? And I said there would be a barter <laughs> Here. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember that because that's something we're trying to do with our other podcast, Women Your Mother Warned You About. So we have a big meeting coming up where we're, um, it's a monetization mastermind. Oh, um, I should be invited to that. that we, we might need to patch you into that. <laughs> I think, I think that'll be a fun conversation. Um, okay. So, so that is, is, is what your company is doing. Yeah. And then in addition to that, um, I'm still traveling and speaking. I speak a lot on business development sales, a lot more on podcasting, um, which has always been fun. Um, I've got a book that's coming out. It's called a, uh, a uh, business, business success champion. So that's, uh, in the works right now, launching the second podcast, Donnie talks. And, you know, I've got two Facebook groups, one, the same name as my original podcast, Donnie success champions. The other one I teach podcasting in. So, it's called, so you want a podcast. So if you want to get into podcasting, come hang out. Okay. Um, is that, is that a group that people can basically buy into to No, that was free. It's free. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we're launching a podcast mastermind, and we're launching some ancillary. I'm uh, a random thing that came out of all this is I'm now going into companies and helping them launch podcasts. So that was an, a new thing. So, um, oh my gosh, we need to do something together. I feel like I'm, I'm. See, so everybody listen to this. What I want you to know is this is how business happens, right? It's just conversations like this. You never know where conversations right. go. You know. I knew that we were destined to do something together. So. This is what I mean, we're figuring it out. I have been looking for a business sugar mama for a long time. So, I mean, if you want to fill that role of just giving me cash. Um, I can, my sugar mama skills, um, I can give you my brain, which has a lot of value. Oh, oh. Almost like cash. <laughs> almost like cash, but not, right. Got it. <laughs> but not. <laughs> but I, I, I think there's so much value to that. Um, people ask me every day about podcasting that is something that we've had on the back burner um my co-host and i on the other show of going out and, and and doing a little bit of that because we're getting asked a lot about of it about it and at the end of the day podcasting really is a sales vehicle yes it is it's just another one of those things that you could be um, and some of you should be doing as another way to reach your audience. Yeah, let me put it this way. Um, uh, you don't make money from your podcast. You make money because of your podcast. Right, right. right? And I tell everybody that, that your podcast just becomes the tip of the spear for your marketing and sales funnel. Um, and, and the best way I can explain it is that I love picking on financial advisors just because I can. But you know, if you end up going to some sort of, 
networking event anywhere, you're going to run into a financial advisor. And, you know, I tell those financial advisors, you need to launch a podcast. And they're like, we're overregulated. We can't do that. I'm like, yeah, I get that. So don't launch a podcast on money. Right, right. Do a right. podcast on whatever your hobby is, whatever you exactly. geek out on. Exactly. And then watch when you can get people to come in that way. Are you familiar with Jeffrey Gittimer? I am. So our our Women Your Mother Warned You About podcast is part of his Sell or Die podcast network. Oh, cool. Which, which is pretty cool. But in one of his books, he talks about speaking and he says, go out and speak and talk about something that has nothing to do with your business or what you're selling. Yeah, it's smart. I have a, a buddy that was a with an Edward Jones guy and he was born with basically one hand. Well, he ended up being a pitcher all the way up into TCU, which is a college over here in Fort Worth. Um, but on the other side of the Metroplex. And the, and the other side, you know, you know, <laughs> y'all are Oklahoma over there in Dallas. <laughs> um, but uh, he was really struggling in his business being a financial advisor with Edward Jones. He just wasn't getting a whole lot of traction until a uh, disabilities nonprofit said, Hey, would you come in and talk to us about, you know, what it was like pitching one handed? And Jason's like, well, sure. And so he just went and told the story and he picked up some business, you know, some financial 401k crap and all that, you know, from speaking. And he went, Holy hell, watch, hold my beer and watch this. And he went speaking everywhere about being a one handed pitcher. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's just a great reminder. I mean, I have to remind myself about that. Um, it it just builds the trust factor. You people know. love people love a story. Yep, yep. That's- so so a couple ways people can connect with you, and we'll put this in our show notes. But you know, some people like to hear it. Um, way, best ways to connect with you, your Facebook groups, if they want to book you, yada yada yada. What are all those things? Yep. So the best thing that they can do is they can actually test me or text me. Um, If you're interested in uh, podcasting whatsoever, you can text me at 817-318-6030 and I'll send you a free PDF. um, And you got to text your email to that number. So it's 817-318-6030. But I'll send you back a PDF that's five free tools that you absolutely need to launch your podcast. Um, and what people don't know is podcasting is the most inexpensive arsenal they can have in their marketing budget period. By the way, the first text is going to come from me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> other than that, come find me at donniebovine.com and, and all my other stuff's there. If you want okay. Facebook, Donnie success champion. So you want a podcast on you know Facebook as well. We have a lot of fun. I, get, I can tell you the group, Donnie Success Champions, we're a freaking family, man. I mean, you're going to see pictures of my goats from my farm. Awesome. You're going to see just crazy stories. I mean, um, this week we're talking nothing but marketing for your business. We're all kinds of fun stuff. So come hang out. Oh, that's awesome. 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 Well, I, um, it's been so awesome having you on my show, The Pivotal Leader. So thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, dude, that's been awesome. Thanks for having me on. I look forward to, you know, making you extremely famous when this airs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And thanks to our loyal listeners for listening to this episode. Before I sign off, a couple of reminders. Check out my other podcast, Women Your Mother Warned You About, the podcast that makes sales sexy again with my co-host, Rachel Pitts. You want to check that out at womenyourmotherwarnsyouabout.com. And I'm really excited to announce that Pivot 10 Results has released the beta version of Spontaneous Selling 1.0, the video series. Really um, quick and brief, 10 short videos on how to apply improv skills in selling. Basically, how to be more human with other humans. So it doesn't necessarily have to just be for selling uh, for customers. Could be selling for employees. How are you engaging your employees as a leader? You can find the link in our show notes for that and use the code Pivotal, all lowercase, Pivotal, to get this program for only $29. It's normally $49. If you're not a reader of show notes, just find your way to pivot10results.com and pull down the solutions menu for sales solutions and you will find Spontaneous Selling 1.0. And until next time, if you want to maximize, you need to improvise. Now it's time for that cool voiceover guide to take us out. 
You've been listening to The Pivotal Leader with Gina Tremarco, owner and founder of Pivot 10 Results and Carolina Improv Company. You can find show notes for this episode on our website at thepivotalleader.com. The Pivotal Leader is a production of Pivot 10 Results, a strategy and training company that helps businesses shift from people problems to performance results. If your company needs help pivoting to success, visit pivot10results.com or email Gina at gina at pivot10results.com. And until next time, if you're feeling stuck in your business, it's probably time to pivot.